Howdy! How is everybody out there in YouTube land, all my crafty peeps? Man, oh man, oh man, I am back, and I am back with a vengeance. For any of you who have kept up on my computer debacle that I have been in for the last, I guess, six weeks, it feels like my entire life has been wrapped up in that mess. Um, <laughs> you know that uh, this has been a struggle. I'm technically challenged to begin with, and Dell Computer Technologies has not made it any simpler for me. I have my new computer up and running, and that's what I'm filming this on today. This is an HP. After over 20 years of dealing with Dell, I have switched companies, and I am with HP. This took a little finagling for me to figure out how to use my webcam in conjunction with a laptop computer, but I'm not real sure how I managed to get it accomplished, but I, here I am. Here I am. Oh, my glory. Hello. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, this has been something else. It's one for the record books, and it ain't over with Dell yet. I'm still fighting with them idiots. I never seen anything like it. Uh, the right hand don't know what the left hand's doing over there at all. I'm probably going to end up in court with them before this is all said and done. But I thought that I would put out a video. I don't know how long or quick it's going to be here, but I thought I'd put out one. I have been messing around with paint and soap. Um, any of you that have followed me for very long know that I just kind of, I'm a butterfly. I flit from one thing to the next. You never know what Brenda's liable to be into. Um, last week I was making paper. Now today I'm painting soap. I will be back to painting or to uh, making paper, but it's raining today. So I'm inside painting soap instead of outside making paper. I'm going to have to figure a way to do making paper inside the house, though, for long. It's going to be fall and winter, and I'm going to be making paper regardless of the weather. But for right now, while, uh, while it's warm outside, I keep the mess outside because making paper can't. As a matter of fact, I'll show you a little bit about what I've been doing with the paper making. Um, I made these cards right here. These are, are uh, recipe cards, is what I call them. I mean, you could make note cards out of them, journaling cards, whatever you want to make out of them. But I made these out of white tissue paper. And I, I scented the paper that I've been making. Uh, this particular one, um, let's see, this is gingerbread that I made these out of, gin gingerbread scent. And then I made uh, some sheet paper. This is made out of packing paper, and I scented these with um, spiced pumpkin. See, this is what happens when you when you get into all these different things. It's mixed media, and I mean extremely mixed media. I'm mixing fragrance oils with making paper. Uh, <laughs> you are only limited by your imagination. Now, these I just made regular um, flat paper. The next batch that I make, I'm going to do texture. And I don't know what scent, it, you know, whatever strikes me when I'm making it. But uh, I made a bunch of this. And you can see, you know, these, these are molded. You can see on the edges the deckling uh, from, the, from the mold. And these, these be great for a lot of different things. You can write letters on them. Uh, you can uh, put them in your journals. You can cut them up, uh, make uh, uh, backings for your cards. You can paint them. You can, you can do anything that you can with any other regular piece of paper. Uh, and, you know, they're... they're uh, just regular paper stock. They go through a printer if you wanted to print on them. But that's uh, that's what that kind of paper making looks like. And then on top of that, I found my molds. I hadn't got rid of all of them like I thought I had. I found my decals. I found my molds. I found a bunch of stuff when I went to really digging through all my crap stuff. But I've been painting these um, these cards. Some of them I didn't paint. Some of them I left plain. But you can see the difference there of the... Uh, see, I'm trying to get this in the camera view there. Uh, the one that I didn't paint, it's just out of the mold. And then the ones that I did paint and cut a little window in a card and, and made cards out of them. 
but I got a bunch of different kinds and uh, I don't even know that I've used them all yet but it gives you an idea of the different designs I mean you can get multitudes of different molds of all different descriptions and uh, mold them up and paint them um, now this I did with acrylic paint but you could do it with watercolors you, you know whatever kind of paint you can do it with paint pens uh, um, gel paint, you know, whatever you want to paint them on, it's it's paper. Anything you can do with paper, you can do with these. And I haven't gotten around to decorating or putting any sentiments or anything on them. That's as far as I got. But you know, they I, I'll flip from one thing to the next. You never know what Brent is liable to be doing next. But today I have been messing around painting soap. I found a, a bunch of my old soap molds in the back of a cupboard, and so I pulled them out and I went to to messing with them as far as molding soap and making different things. And this one is a flower. I'll try to get it where the light can shine on it enough that you can see it. But it, it's a flower. It's a kind of a domed flower. It looks like a chrysanthemum to me. And so far I painted it purple. I mixed up a little purple mica with some alcohol, the 91% aspheric al al rubbing alcohol. And then I had a bunch of these little owls. And let's see if I can get that where the light will shine on it so you can see it. The little owls, they're all different shapes of these little owls. And I molded them up and I decided that I paint on them. So far, he's just got little purple chests on my, my little owls. But I have a mess of different colors of this mica. So I thought I'd play with that a little bit and you could watch me do some painting. But these, um, the easiest way I found to mess with this mica paint, because I'll tell you what, this mica paint um, or uh, mica powder is a mess. It um, it's a powder and it's extremely fine. And if you don't watch what you're doing, you get it all over you. So let's see here. I'm just gonna play a little bit here with this. I'm not gonna mix up everything in the house, but. I'll mix up a few colors to give you an idea here of what we're doing. Let me get some paper towels tore off here because I know I'm going to need them. All right. So what I do here is I took a, a little knife. It's a carving knife. And that's what I'm using for a scooper with this stuff. And I take caps off water bottles. They are the perfect size. And when you're done, you just... Wrap them up in a paper towel, throw them away. And that way you keep the mess away. I mean, bottle caps, shoot, you can find them all over the doggone place. Uh, very, very easy to come up with bottle caps. And let's see here. I'm digging around to find uh, colors that I'm looking for. The first one I'm going to go with is black. To go with my purple. What I do is I just take my little craft knife in there and I scoop up. Well, come on, work with me. I scoop up a scoop of it on my craft knife. See that? And I put it in the little cap. Then I take a piece of paper towel and I wipe off my craft knife because you don't want to get this all mixed up, you know, colors and other colors you end up with mud and now before I spill that all over every doggone thing here I'm gonna Ziploc the top of that thing shut because the last thing you want to do is dump a bag of that powder in the floor and the next thing I'm gonna mix up is some yellow yaller as we say back in the holler some yaller paint Michelle's probably loving this <laughs> I know Michelle watches me and she just laughs. She says, how the heck did that hick get into Indiana? Uh, <laughs> I snuck in about the dark of night, Michelle. We know it, nobody watching. Okay, so we got yellow and we got black. And the next one I want to do is white. And yes, they make mica powder in white. And I keep down in that powder with my little knife and I get me a scoop of it there and I dump that in the lid. All right, now we zip that bag up to avoid 
make it a big mess. Well, easy for me to say. Easier said than done. Let me put my knife down over here before I poke a hole in the bag. Oh, my goodness gracious. Well, human ingenuity. There we go. That starts in and then it don't want to go on. There we got her. I knew if I kept at it. I'll sit that back out of the way so the camera can focus in here on what I'm doing. And I have yet to figure out how to get this camera to zoom in yet using it with YouTube. So you'll just have to kind of bear with me. Now I got a bottle of the alcohol. And you see there, 91% alcohol. This is the heavy duty stuff, not the, the little cheap stuff. And the easiest way I have found to do this now, they've got a little squirt thing here on the lid, but I tend to make a mess of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour it and then I'm going to pour a little bit in there with the mic powder. And you don't need much, just a little bit. You don't want it real thin or you'll not get no color. So just, just a few drops. I'll pour the rest of it back in that bottle. And I've got a whole myriad of paintbrushes up here. I love my paintbrushes. Now, I'm going to paint on my little owls. And I think, let's see, what are we going to do here? We're going to go in with the black. Now, if you need more alcohol, you can add, always add more. If you need more powder, you can add more powder. But we're going to start with this. I'm going to paint these little wings here with the black. I mean, this, these aren't real owls. These are soap owls, so they can be any color you want to make them. You are only limited by your imagination when you're, when you're doing crafts and artwork. You are your own designer. And I've heard so many people there on the internet, you know, typing about their projects, and I, I'm not really sure this is good enough. And it, hey, this is your design. This is something that you have come up with on your own, something that you enjoy. Uh, th this is coming from your imagination, so how can it be wrong? You just have to go with whatever the flow is. And if, I mean, it's just, if you go to an art gallery, you'll notice there are all kinds of artists that are represented at the art gallery you don't necessarily appreciate everything that's up there on the wall. But that is that person's interpretation of whatever it is that they're trying to put out. Just like not everybody is going to appreciate your interpretation of what you are putting out. Your thing might not be for everybody. However, it's for you. And as long as you like it, that's what matters. Eventually, somebody will come along and appreciate your style of work. So now, right now, I've done like his little ears up there on top and the, his head back here behind his eyes. I'm going to do his little cheeks here with the black. I've done his wings in black. Get around there, underneath his eyes. Uh, I'm trying to leave his little beak alone because I want to hit that with the yeller. Just a dab on there. We'll have to try to cover that up with yellow paint. I don't want to scar him up too bad or make a big mess with this wet paint on him. We do his little cheeks. We just go real slow and take your time with it. I'm not trying to run a foot race here. I've got my little knife here. Let me lay my paintbrush down. Take my little knife. I'm going to see if I can scrape that off there because it's bothering me. Because it's soap, it will carve. If you want something special for your bathroom, you know, you want to uh, paint up some soap, you can do that. You can get a regular bar of soap at the store, but generally those bars that you buy at the store are extremely hard. And so they're hard to carve. 
um, they will chip and break. If you get a softer bar of soap, like handmade soap, you can carve on it or you can mold it to whatever shape you want to make it if you're making your own soap. And uh, then you can paint it with the mica paint. Now this one, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make all these like a set. So I want them all pretty much matched. So we're going to paint his wings black too. Just get a little bit of paint, just dab it on his wings. I'm not going to go down the sides of them. I'm just going to do the, do the top part. I need to get a little more alcohol in my powder there. Because alcohol evaporates really fast. Now, he don't really. Yeah. Let's see here. Yay. Got to get the light on him just right so that you can see the detail of the mold on him. But come right around in there with the black around them eyeballs. Go right on around and do his ears. I feel like Miss Shelley. I'm doing the pity pat on the paint. Get the back of his head here too. Go right around that eyeball. While I'm thinking of it, you know, talking about Shelly, any, anybody that's watching my channel that is not aware of Crafting Mamas on YouTube, look them up. Shelly does a couple shows a week. Michelle does a couple shows a week. Michelle Scott, she does uh, junk journals, and Shelly does journals. And Shelly's doing some Christmas in this now, ain't it? Um, so you can uh, Christmas along with us. We've been making a few Christmas ornaments and uh, Christmas cards and things so you can craft along we have uh, live shows there on those channels Michelle and uh, and Shelly so you can craft along with us and chat with us in the chat rooms we have a lot of fun and uh, if you haven't been to my other channel where I do my stories I'm I'll put a link in the description of this video and that way you can find that channel where I tell stories about things that's happened in my lifetime and I think I've about got him well maybe just a tad over here on the side missing just a little bit there we go More on top there. There he goes. So we'll let the black dry. And let's see here. Got another nut. I mean, before I get too carried away with that, let me put just a touch more alcohol in that cap. Remember the old days that talked about the fellas that shot with the muskets, they could tell them, keep your powder dry. Well, in this instance, you don't want to keep your powder dry. <laughs> you don't want it swimming, but you don't want to keep your powder dry. I might have got too much in there. I have to put some more powder in there now. No, that seems to be working good. All right. All you can do is just try it, you know, trial and error. Till you're happy with it, with the consistency. Little dip, dip, and a little pity pat, pat. <laughs> I love my crafting family. Okay, this one's got a crooked head. <laughs> He's got his little head tilted. Right, let's see here, we can get around his eyeballs.
get his ears up there on the top. Uh, gals have that pointed tips on their head, make them look like they got ears. Go right on around that. A little more thorough top of his eyeball. See, what else have I been doing? I've been making some Christmas ornaments. Um, some of you have seen where I've posted there on Facebook and different places about the little embellishments and stuff that I have made uh, with the seed beads. I can sit around if I'm watching TV or something or watching YouTube videos or something of an evening and, and whip out some of those. Uh, there's what did I come up with? 175 beads to the embellishment, and I use a couple of them per ornament. Um, let me reach over here and grab one of them. I've been boxing them up, keep them out of the way, but give you an idea on these ornaments. So there's one embellishment on that side, and then I put a flower on it, doily flower, and then I put a Another embellishment on this side of it, and some uh, applique flowers. I put a doily on the ornament, well, two doilies, two small ones on this ornament. And uh, that's how I made that one. They're all a little bit different, and every embellishment that I put on them is different too, because I, I don't use the same colors over and over again. And just try to mix them up, do do things different. See, this is uh, red with green leaves here, and I've got red and white with green leaves over here on this side, and different colors of green leaves on them. I mean, you know, it's just whatever strikes me at the moment, wherever the wind blows me. But these are just uh, cheap little ornaments that you get like a dollar store or something, and decorate them up. Do a little shabby chic on there, and. That's how I've been doing those. Those ornaments are kind of, you know, blah, just to put on the tree without doing some embellishment to them. That's a nice little way to dress them up a little bit. Yeah, get to painting this little feller up here. Do his wings up black. We want to go around his face. A little more there around his face on that side. A little more paint. get up here over the top of his head. Hmm. I'm going to do him just a touch different, I think, from the other three because I want to differentiate that black. See, there's a little ring. I don't know if you all can see that or not. There's a little ring there, the way the mold was made to raise his eyes, his face up. And if I do the black on his ears up there, well, I don't know. I mean, I've got this one I've done with the black and then the black on the back of the head. Yeah, that'd be okay, I guess. Decisions, decisions. This is the creative process at work. Around his eyes. Yeah, I like using that mica powder for painting the soap because it uh, it really does good coverage. I might, you know, if you use it for soap, then it's not going to hurt your skin because you know a lot of soap is colored with mica. So there we have that now. 
I mix up the brush with some water back there and I'm going to clean my brush up a little bit because I don't want to do any black paint on that flower. So we get the black off of the brush. We're going to go to a different color. Well, yeah, that's not really enough. Try that again. Black really got in that brush. And I want my brush clean. I don't want to muddy it, muddy up my next color here. Just one more time with it, I think I'll do it. You want to get your keep your tools clean. I could switch brushes, but then this would be drying out, and I don't want to have to throw it away. You let your brushes dry out with paint on them. I don't care if it is mica. It, you're going to have a mess. Now, I've got black all over my hands, so I'm going to take my little squirt bottle here with some water and wet my fingers down a little bit to get some of that off of me. I'll be spreading that everywhere. I say it like fairy dust. You don't want to sprinkle this stuff everywhere. <laughs> it's a bear to clean up. A little water will take it right off your hands. That's why I say, you know, it's okay for soap because it's not going to stain you up. There. Clean up a little bit. A little board down here. This is just a little old cheap cutting board that I got, I don't know, dollar store or something. A long, long time ago, and I've been using it for years and years. It washes up good, um, but it makes a nice base for doing your painting on. Painting or um, if you do anything with uh, clay, any, any molding. I probably should have done the white first, but hey, we're in the yellow now, so let's go ahead and do some yellow. Well, now that's too much on there. Take it down a little bit. Okay, do a little yellow on the beak. And we'll do a little yellow on this one's beak. And we'll do a little yellow on this one's beak. And I know you're all saying, what'd she mix up all that yellow paint for? So all she's going to do on them little houses or beaks with the yellow. Well, now you just hang on. But you never know what old Brent's liable to do next. Brenda can get ornery. Oops, I got that on his, on his black feathers there. So we take our little knife, and we'll pick that off there. Now I'm going to go back in with the black in a little bit, and I can touch up anything there in the black that I need to touch up. So we're not going to get all excited about me taking a little nick out of him there. All right, now, got your yellow paint. See, I've got this chrysanthemum sitting over here. And I want to, well, first we're going to do some yellow up here on the top portion of it. Brighten that up a little bit right there. Now, this is soap. It ain't a masterpiece, so it don't have to be just absolutely perfect, but bring that right there into the, into the leaves just a little bit. into the flower petals. That's what I was trying to think of. Okay, now, I'm just going to kind of highlight around some of these purple leaves on this with the yellow. 
Just kind of make them stand out a little bit. Dress it up a little bit. That, uh, that stands it out a little bit from the, uh, you know, the purple. Shows off the mold a little bit more on it. And like I say, don't have to be perfect. This is, it's not a masterpiece, it's paste soap. I mean, you got to learn to pick your battles. If, if somebody don't like it, well, then it's just not their cup of tea. Um, it's nothing for you to get all excited about. They might do something that you don't particularly like. Uh, if somebody wants to offer me some constructive criticism on something, I'm not above taking it, you know. Um, they say, you know, if you tried this or if you tried that, maybe, you know, it would work a little easier for you or have you ever thought of this or that or, you know, hey, I'm not above improving myself. But by the same token, you know, somebody said, oh, that's just the ugliest thing i ever seen in my life. That's not constructive criticism. That That is hateful. Um, <laughs> my daddy used to say there was a right and a wrong way to talk to somebody. And I think some folks was taught the wrong way. Shelly says, if you haven't got something good to say about it, don't say nothing at all. She's got a point there, you know. That. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not above offering people a suggestion. If, you know, they say, well, I'm just not happy with it and I don't know what to do to change it. You know, I'll take a look at it. If there's something I think that could be changed, you know, I'll, I'll offer a suggestion. But it's their piece of art. It's, you know, it's the way it was speaking to them. I just kind of like to try to let whatever it is I'm working on speak to me and tell me, you know, what it wants to be, what it wants to do. Um, when I was sitting here messing a while ago with these with this flower, and I was going through my colors and I thought, now, what color would that flower like to be? What would what would shake that flower up? And I got to the purple color, and I I heard the flower speak to me, and it said that it would like to be a purple flower. So that's what color I mixed up and put on there. And my little owls, they sitting there, and they said, "Hey, I like that purple too." <laughs> so I put a little purple on them. And I heard a lot of people think, "Well, she's goofier than." Me. <laughs> anything in the world thinking that stuff speaks to her well it does it speaks to me maybe it don't speak to you because you don't want to listen you ever been around somebody that don't want to listen to you don't aggravate the art by not listening to it Go down around them leaves. Now, see how nice that stands out? A lot better than just leaving it all purple. Just down down over them leaves and them petals. That yellow. Just the edges of them. Just about got that whipped. Okay. I think that's about as far as I want to go around there with that. And I just kind of come in around the bottom because I got plenty of that yellow paint you left. So 
and I'll just come in around the bottom, do a little band. Kind of like frosting the bottom of a cake. This is um, oatmeal milk and honey scented soap. I think uh, some folks like to try to make their stuff look like it's come from a factory too. <laughs> you know, they want that precision out of it. This this is homemade. You know, this is not precision. This is handcrafted, hand designed. It's not supposed to look like it came out of the factory. It's supposed to look like it's a one-of-a-kind piece. You just come right around there with the paint. Gives a nice little base. There, that ain't bad. Now, I'm going to wash my brush out again. Get that yellow out of it. Reminds me of the old Pepsi Dent commercials. You young ones wouldn't remember that. But it used to be an old Pepsi Dent toothpaste commercial. I'd say, you wonder where the yellow went when you brush your teeth with Pepsi Dent. Now, you want to know if your brush is clean or not. You can't really tell by looking at it because it's wet. You rub it through the paper towels, and if you're still coming off with yellow, it's still got paint in it. You want the brush to come out clean. Okay, she's coming out clean now. All right. So we did the yellow. I moved the yellow out of the way. Now my white, it needs, it needs some juice. It needs some alcohol juice. I'm going to put a little alcohol in that little cup right there on top of that white powder. Just a few drops will do you. Mix it up there with the paintbrush. Mixy, mixy, mixy. And I'm going to come in here on the top of this flower in the very center with the white. Just like so. I don't know. I'm trying to think whether I want to put any. I don't think I want to put any white on the the flower itself. I like that flower with the yellow and the purple. I think if I start messing with white, I'm just going to make a mess out of it. So that is going to just sit as it is. I'm going to move that off to one side. And my little owls are going to have big old white eyes. I'm going to come back in with the black and I'm going to make pupils in their eyeballs. So I'm going to go around that with the white. A little more there. Probably got a drop or two too much. Uh, alcohol in that. It's coming out awful thin. But it's not too bad. I try to bring that white all the way around to where the black is on the side of the face without getting into the black like I did just there. Touch that one up when I get in the black here in a minute. Yeah, nice. Get that up there where you can see. Him. See that? Painting my little owl. I 
be looking good now. All right, set him off to one side and come in to the next one. Let me grab a little white paint. Hang his old eyeball up. Who loves you, baby? Oh man, I tell you what, I'd miss doing my videos. I was really jonesing last week, waiting for my computer to get here so that I could do the, do some videos with some of the stuff I was doing. I have been involved in all kinds of stuff. I know I've got other projects sitting around here that I have worked on, but I couldn't bring no videos on because I didn't have a computer that would do the job. You know, see when I sit it down, then I see. Where I could do a little better. So go back in and touch up around there a little bit. There we go. Now, grab the next one. I kind of start with an outline and color in, just like if you're doing a coloring book, you know. You, I, the way I was taught was you do the outline first and then you just stay within your lines. So you go around the edge. And do the insides of the eyeballs. Set him aside and bring the next one down here. You come in. Around the edges. Do up here at the top. And the edges of his eye up there. I've been making a lot of flowers too, paper flowers and uh, lace flowers they haven't told me what project they want to be on yet they're hollering at me that they want it done so i got that done i've had people say ain't you lonely living alone hell no i'm not lonely i've got all my projects talking to me <laughs> I've got stuff packed up in boxes over here that's been muttering that would like to be brought out. My clay's over here, and I've got wood carving stuff, and I've got wood burning stuff, and I've got leather stuff, and um, <laughs> my looms. My looms have been screaming at me that they want me to finish some stuff that I've got on them that I haven't messed with in a while. Um, so i got to get back and get them going, too. I ought to do a video for you guys one of these days on all the different looms that I have. You will be amazed. I've been a loom collector for years, and they're all hand stuff, too. It's not not the ones that, you know, you got the foot treadles and the beater bars and all that. Oh, no, this is all hand loom stuff that I've got. Now, see, I say this, that my paint is a little loose because... It went on too light to suit me, too watery. And it's not giving me good coverage. So we're going to fix that. Well, I don't really relish the idea of messing with more of this powder at the moment. It's going to happen. And let's see, what am I going to use? Because I don't want to. Well, I can do that because I've got the knife cleaned off. All right. We're going to put a little more powder in that alcohol there. I'm just grab me a knife full of it and put it in the bag. Seal the bag back up so we don't get it all over. Okay. Now, 
take the paintbrush and mix that in. You'd rather have this thicker than looser. Thicker will give you good coverage. There we go, that's much better. I'm gonna hit that flower back there with a little bit of that too. Brighten that up on top a little bit. There, that looks better. Okay, now get these with a second coat here since they loosened up on me. They look kind of Kind of bald eyed. See that brightens them up and make it a little, a little whiter. And a little more right there. Okay, one more. Hit him again. Got the base down, so it don't take much. Just go over one more time here real quick. Now, my alcohol has done evaporated out of my black paint. You can see it looking pretty dry over here. So, what I'm going to do is clean this white off of the brush. And let me check this black. It looks awful dry. Well, it might be good enough for what little I'm going to do with it. Now, I want to hit just the pupil of the eye. So I need that brush to just be as tightly threaded as I can get it. So I'm just going to roll it here in the paper towel a little bit. And that's not helping me. <laughs> okay, we're going to need a little more juice. Just a drop or two. There. Just to get the brush a little wetter so it'll roll. I want to tighten up those strands on the very end. Now, I've got a tighter brush that I could use, but I've been using this one. And I'd like to keep it that way. There. That got me a pretty good point. And I want to come right in on his little bitty eyeballs right there in the center. And just put a dab of paint right on his eyeballs. And I want to touch up this little spot that I had to pick the yellow paint off of. Come over here on this little filler. Give him a little black eyeball there and a little black eyeball here. My little Al, what pretty eyes you have. The better to see you is my dear. So if they ain't big enough to suit you, you just go back and pat them a little bit more. A little pity pat for Shelly. <laughs> yeah, I had to a little paint off the side of his head here, so I'll come back in and touch that up with the black. Just look for any spots that you might have missed that may, you know, be garish to you. 
and there they are. I might take just a little of that black and just put a few little black dots up there on the top of the flower since I got the black paint out. Just to highlight it a little bit, give it a little more interest there on top. So, there we have that. Now, wash my brush out. And that shows you about soap paint. And we just let them dry good, and then they're pretty to put in a little soap dish on your bathroom vanity. Something a little different. If you... Uh, Took some cardstock, made a little box, you know. You could give them away for birthday presents, Christmas presents, Halloween's coming. Uh, you made like a little hostess gift to take for a Halloween party. Take some handmade, hand painted scented soaps. Make a nice little gift for a Halloween party hostess. School teachers are going to be having Halloween parties for the youngins, and they're going to want parents to come in, you know, to bring the cupcakes and all that sort of thing. It's nice to take a little teacher gift, you know. Teachers remember you for doing that kind of stuff. But there, there you go with the soap painting. And so I'm going to let them sit and let them dry for a little bit. The brush is all nice and clean now. I'll set it up there and let it dry. And that is how we hand make soap, um, or hand paint it, anyway. Oh, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else over here that we can get into. I don't think so right at the moment. One of the things, though, that uh, as soon as I get another glue gun project up here, I want to show you a couple tricks with a glue gun. Some of them, some of the girls have been talking about uh, what is the best way to stop the glue um, threads or the glue strings from your glue gun and um, one tip that I have not tried was uh, the one where you put the glue sticks in the freezer uh, what I have always done is I've always used Vaseline now it doesn't get rid of 100% of them but it does cut down on them drastically and you lube up the end of your glue gun I may get Bernie over here. If I can get him, well, I think I've set something on his tail. Sorry, Bernie. It may hurt your tail, buddy. I'm getting loose. Oh, I just take uh, Vaseline. I do this while it's cold. You don't want to do this when it's hot because you burn the bejeebers out of yourself. I'll just take a little Vaseline, get all Bernie's nose up here, and just lube his nose up real good with Vaseline. Now, you're going to want to have a glue stand for your glue gun because when Vaseline melts, Vaseline drips. But the idea of it is, is the Vaseline comes down over the nose of your glue gun and when the glue comes out, then it kind of gets coated with the Vaseline and that stops the uh, majority of your glue strings. It won't stop them all, but it's going to stop most of them. It has worked for me. Um, something else that I find works is if when you are using your glue gun, you keep a bowl of water on your table, not your paint water. I mean, <laughs> you just, just a special bowl of clean water on your table. It gives you something to dip your fingers in when you are messing with your glue. If you got something, you know, you like to tap down on it and you don't have the, the silicone finger protectors or you don't have the, uh, uh, glue tampers and that sort of thing if you're going to tap on it with your fingers you're going to burn yourself if you don't have some water on your fingers so you know, want a bowl of water to dip your fingers into and then you can tap down and if there's glue strings and stuff you just you know wind them up there on your fingers and flick them in the trash can because um, the glue's not going to stick to the water and it makes it pretty simple um, I've never had any big issues with the glue strings since I started using this method. So 
Um, we'll, I'll try to get that demonstrated for you in the next few days here. I'm sure I'll come up with a project where I'm going to need to use hot glue. So there is that. Um, let's see. Like I say, I've been making all kinds of paper flowers. Um, I've been making them out of uh, Shelly's Magazine things uh, where she talked about cutting the, the pages that, from magazines and making paper flowers. I've been using my method. I'm making the paper roses in all different sizes, uh, making them out of um, envelopes and out of parchment paper and out of just regular white paper. Uh, this is the inside of an envelope that was sent to me, a billing envelope. Um, and gosh, let's see. I've been making uh, making these flowers. These are uh, out of lace. This is the vintage lace. See if I can get this so that that light is not glaring on it to where you can see it. But it's the vintage, the old fashioned vintage lace. And I ruffled them up and stitched them together. Two, that's two different sizes of vintage lace. And make those, those will make nice centers for other flower embellishments. Um, my goodness gracious, I've been, had some friends that's had birthdays. I've had to make birthday cards up for them. And so I got that out of the way and got those in the mailbox. Um, so if you are one of my August birthday friends, you may be looking for a birthday card in the mailbox in the next day or two. Um, <laughs> sent one lady out some happy mail the other day, seeing to make her happy. Uh, and then I know when I get off of here, I'm going to think of a dozen things. Mostly, I've been messing with computers and computer issues and Dell Technologies. They used to be a good computer company. I haven't got much nice to say about them anymore. <laughs> like I say, you haven't heard my, my computer debacle video. You have to turn over there and listen to <laughs> that. <laughs> and I mean, it's not even complete because it's still going on today. I got an email from them goobers today about it. Uh, <laughs> and I've sent a step back and they're still having fits. I, Lord have mercy. Our good helps are to find. That's all I can say. Well, with that said, ladies, be crafty. Come up with some, some interesting crafts. I need to see some videos once in a while, what y'all are doing out there. And I will say this too. If, um, uh, if there's any of you that's got Google Plus and you want to come on a show with me, we'll do a live show. Um, or, you know, we can pre-record it if you'd rather me do it that way. However you want to do it. You want to come on, uh, be on camera and show some of the stuff that you're doing. And, you know, we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll kick it and have a little fun. Um, I welcome other people to come on the show with me. It is not a big deal. I'm pretty easy to get along with unless you're Dell Technologies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and anybody that knows me really well knows, you know, I'm not a person to complain a whole lot about something, but oh, it, that has just been one heck of a nightmare. Do not buy a Dell computer. Do not do it. I'm telling you, don't do it. So far, this HP has been wor working like a dream, and I've had a little over 24 hours now. And it was fairly easy to set up. I, I did call their tech support and have them help me set it up because I'm technically challenged and they know more about what they're doing um, than I do in some respects. So they, uh, they helped me get it set up and uh, I've kind of been flailing around with the rest of it, but I'm learning as I go on how to operate this stuff. But Lord have mercy, do not buy a Dell. Not if you don't want to go through a nightmare. So with that, I will bid you adieu. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will be back in touch with you very soon.